Hello, Losey here, and welcome to History Through Games. As I've already mentioned in the previous video, this month we are collecting money for the Movember Foundation UK. The Movember Foundation helps support research into prostate and testicular cancer, as well as help with men's mental health issues by donating money to various causes uh, surrounding those issues. I am collecting money for them, and there is a link at the bottom below, so you can go over there and donate if you wish. We're also running charity live streams over at Lozy PC as well, all month, to try and raise some money. So if you guys want to be generous, please go over to there, go check them out, even if you can't donate, just go check them out and be the one to start that conversation. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this th third and final part of our Legion video. Sorry this has been three episodes, I could have done it in one long episode. But I prefer not to do that with Weapons of War. I like to keep them short and, you know, we split it up into decent time periods. Anyway, sit back and enjoy. Thank you very much. By 27 BC, Rome had changed greatly. Augustus had replaced the Republic with a monarchy under the guise of restoring the Republic. The legions also changed, and Augustus did something similar with them as he had done with his political program. He took the old Marian legions and updated them on his new Roman order. One of the first things that Augustus did was fix the branches of the military. These were the Praetorian Guard, the legions, the auxiliary and the navy. The Praetorian Guard was by far the most prestigious of the branches, and perhaps served the easiest life, spending most of their time within Rome and fighting very little in the 1st century AD. Augustus also presented regular wages with the legionary, providing 900 successes a month, yet all legionaries only got a third of this every four months due to the rest being put into their equipment, shelter and so forth. Praetorians were also paid ten times this, and the highest rated centurion, the Primus Pilus, received the most wage of all, over 50,000 sesterces a year. The legion size was now also fixed. Despite the Marian reformers trying to bring in a fixed legion, the Republican legion could still vary, yet Augustus' legions now fixed at one size. There was now eight men to a squad, with 80 to a century, six centuries to a cohort, and ten cohorts to a legion. There was, however, also a time when the first cohort was doubled in size, yet it is unknown why this happened and unknown when. The legions were also primarily recruited from Italy and the various Roman colonies from around the empire with citizens filling the ranks. Auxiliaries were recruited from the various tribes from the empire and to begin with, they gave their name to the various cohorts of auxiliaries. However, as time went on, these cohorts would be filled with troops from around the empire and not the ethnic region that gave the cohort its name. Of course, a similar thing would happen with the Legion, as more and more troops were required to fill the gaps in the Legion, and thus non-citizen troops from around the Empire would become legionary soldiers. One of the major things as well that changed was the soldiers could no longer drift between the military and civilian life that they had been doing so under the Republic, and they were given a now special legal status. They were required to serve for a fixed time, which started as 16 years. They were also given a four-year period of evocati afterwards. This meant that despite having to serve on for another four years, they were rewarded with not having to do fatigue duties. After someone had finished their time in the military, they were given a retirement payment, which initially began with land grants, but soon became cash payments. Auxilia, unlike the legionaries who had been given cash and land, were given citizenship when they completed their service and were given a citizen diploma on a plaque of bronze to explain their new status. This had the other effect of not only bringing troops into the legions, but also Romanizing the empire, as these new citizens returned to their native lands. One of the major issues that Augustus was facing before his legions were re-established was the issue of loyalties, and Augustus once again exploited the Marian system. Under the Marian system, the loyalty was to the general who provided pay. And thus, because the Emperor was the one who was providing pay to the legions, Augustus made it that all men joining the legions would have to give an oath to the Emperor. Although there are many words to the issue of Emperor in the Roman context, there is no official word for Emperor within the Latin language. Modern day historians have gone to turn Imperator, which we normally give to Commander, to Emperor, as it appears on many of Imperial coins. In the Greek, 
and Aramaic languages, however, emperors were notably called kings, a very ironic yet very accurate description of their role. The legions were obviously deployed all around the empire with the goal of primarily defending the empire, yet over the hundred years from the death of Augustus to the reign of Trajan, the empire did grow, notably with the invasion of Britannia and Dacia under Trajan, yet most of the Roman legions were deployed in a defensive manner. In 23 CE, Tacitus tells us where all the legions were deployed. There are three in Spain at the time, none in Gaul. The German frontier, however, was split into two provinces, with four legions being deployed into Lower Germania and the other four legions deployed into Upper Germania. And the frontier at the Danube was defended by six legions, and in the east there were four legions with the province of Syria and two within the province of Egypt. Egypt is also an interesting province as it is the only province that could not be entered by a senator without prior permission from the emperor, and it was ruled by an equestrian, not a senatorial elite. The African border was also protected by one legion, the Third Augustia. One thing someone should, one should note is under the reign of Augustus and the later empire, there were imperial and senatorial provinces. Senatorial provinces would not have any legions within them, yet imperial provinces would, and this is how the empire and the emperor got away with having so many units under his control while yet still technically being a member of the Republic. There were some oddities with the naming of the legions, as whenever a new legion was created, numbers were restarted, meaning that there are several first, second and third legions, yet they all had different cognomens. There were legions named after regions, rulers and other names such as Victrix, which means victorious in Latin, meaning that despite the some legions with the same number, there are no legions with the same name. The only rules that majorly mattered was after 9 CE and a disaster within the Chatterberg Forest where Varus lost three legions of the Roman Empire. The Legion 17, Legion 18 and Legion 19 were struck off and no legions could be called that number or name again. The Roman Legion however therefore was slowly becoming the pop culture icon that many know after years of exposure to the Romans. <laughs>